Yeah. But it did. Like, the man needed to make a play, and Kansas State said, give me that. And it's been such a long time since I've seen an OU quarterback make that sort of play with that sort of weight. You know, you down a score, you're in the two-minute. You have an opportunity to drive down the field and at least tie, but probably go get a win. Like, that's what this offense is designed to do. And I can only as- ascribe so much blame to him because, like, all the football people want to tell me that it's a team game. And I'm like, not if you ain't got no offensive line. They are the team. That's the team. That, that's what it is. I'll find skill guys. I will. I will always find skill guys. They are everywhere. As a matter of fact, the only criticism I can ma- make about the state of Florida as a football state is it doesn't produce enough offensive linemen because it can't. It's a sweaty state. You gonna <laughs> drop some weight there, man. You gonna figure out real soon that you are the kind of defensive lineman that should have been playing wide receiver the whole time as opposed to the dude that grows up in Nebraska or Iowa or Minnesota, or Wisconsin, where you don't get to find out that you got some wiggle until it's too late. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We got to go to some place where, where the, the, the tribes are awfully corn-fed, right? Man, but like, to that degree, right? Or to that end. I was thinking about Derrick Henry the other day, and, you know, we talk about Derrick Henry and his enormous size since high school. He hasn't not, has not changed his size since high school, and he's still bigger than everybody. And yet I'm thinking, you know what? In Northeast United States, in Midwestern United States, hell, Oklahoma, that dude plays line. That dude does not get to carry the rock. You certainly don't build the offense around him carrying the rock, and you certainly don't feed him the ball 400 times (laughs) in one season. And I'm thinking, you know what? Good for him for being raised in one of the hottest places in the continental United States. And by hottest, I mean humid. Because if he was allowed to grow to the size that he probably would have been in Michigan. That dude plays defensive line, right? Like, I don't think they would have shading him so hard as to put him at offensive line. But he would have played line, right? All to say, Oklahoma ain't got no offensive line. And I thought that they did. Like, I got to underscore this, dog. The strength of this football team, this 2020 football team, is the offensive line. Not what's going to be, not what's expected to be, is, even today, it's the offensive line. And they are sorry. They are sorry. You had five dudes that started football games last year on the offensive line playing the game, and you had three different left tackles. And not because somebody got hurt. You did not know who was playing left tackle. You pulled the left guard. Creed Humphrey was getting beat up by a dude that goes to Kansas State, and that dude was supposed to be a first-round draft pick at center. That's your captain. You ain't got but two captains. So, so, so what, what excuse do you want to pull out, out of the hat? Do you want to say, well, you know, uh, do, you, do you want to pull out you know, another 2020, or do you say, like, maybe the recruiting just wasn't as strong as, as we'd like it to be? Maybe we, we just didn't have anybody to pair with our all-star quarterback and all-star skills, uh, our all-star skills squads. Oh, man. All right. So, like, let me unpack that just a little bit further then. Oklahoma is getting almost everybody that it wants to get. We're talking about evaluation. We're not talking about recruiting. Mm-hmm. You have a five-star in Bray Walker who did not play against Kansas State. You have a four-star in Stacey Wilkins who did not play against Kansas State. Both of those dudes, to my eyes, projected as left tackles. Apparently, Walker is a better guard than a tackle, according to Bill Biedenboe, because that's all he's ever played at OU, is guard. And then Wilkins was expected to put on some weight last year and be the starter this year. Instead, they still trotting out this dude, Eric Swenson, who got beat like he stole something against defensive end from South Dakota last year. Now, caveat there, that dude that played South Dakota last year, he was an All-American, but he also went to South Dakota. Okay, You transfer from Michigan. You're not supposed to get beat by that dude. And yet, the ends at Kansas State, Khalid Duke, Wyatt Hubert, went to work on both tackles. Like, I thought Adrian Ely, the right tackle, was just, you ain't got to worry about that dude, right? That's one of the coolest things you ever get to say about an offensive lineman. I ain't got to worry about him. He going to be fine. He was getting sunned. Like, I watched him get head slapped so hard that he, his, his head rattled. Like, he had to shake off a headache. And I'm going, wait a second, guys. That's a, that's a, 
that's a redshirt freshman in his second start. Y'all, y'all can't be shaky, let alone be leaky. And man, mm. they turned into a colander against Kansas State. And Bill Beatonbo makes about eight hundred thousand dollars a year to coach offensive line. Bill Beatonbo was often cited as one of the best offensive line coaches in college football. The other one being Sam Pittman, and he's a head coach now. So you tell me, is it recruiting or is the valuation based on the facts that I have given you? I don't know. I, it, I'm, I'm still pretty lost. Like the, they, like OU has had, if ever, OU's getting everybody they, that they want and they put on a show like this against Kansas State. Granted, I don't know the ins and outs of K-State's defense line, how they were evaluated or how they're showing up right now. Man, I don't know. They they didn't get recruited to Oklahoma. How about that? I feel like I should be able to end there because Oklahoma doesn't recruit with Georgia, doesn't recruit with Clemson, doesn't recruit with LSU, doesn't recruit with Alabama. It recruits with Tennessee. It recruits with Florida State. It recruits with the second tier of most Power Fives programs and uh, – conferences right and the strength of this team has been the offense like it is not uncommon to see an Oklahoma offense rush for 300 yards in a game these dudes average 3.7 yards per carry against Kansas State it's not even that I think that they're eliminated I know they're eliminated from college football playoff I know it happened it's that this is not the bottom like it can get worse and against Iowa State it would be bloody because Iowa State's a better football team than Kansas State and Iowa State lost to ULL. Like, it's not going to be pretty. And I also know that they've been eliminated because, you know, probably beat Texas, not because Oklahoma's a better football team than Texas, but because Texas is going to find a way to screw up the Big 12 just getting in the college football playoff again. They're just going to find a way. Even in a year where the Pac-12 is only going to play seven games and the Big 10 is going to try to play eight in eight weeks. They still going to manage to screw that up. I have no doubt. On the other hand, I'm looking at the defending national champions. And I got to ask this question. If LSU runs the table, I still don't think they get into the playoff. Would you think they get into the playoff? I mean, they're coming out of the SEC West, so that means they got Auburn. They got Alabama. They got A&M. They have to play cross Division against Florida, like, would you expect LSU to make the college football playoff semifinal? They run the table when the SEC conference. 